if there was one vegetable with no redeeming qualities, but which could be addictive in a way similar to wheat and dairy products, known as a superfood by many, mistakenly thought to provide the body with a rich supply of nutrients, one vegetable with remarkable toxic potential, capable of causing pain and chronic illness, a vegetable that should be avoided at all costs, one vegetable to rule them all? This is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we're going to bust some myths about spinach. Now, whilst you think I might be over-exaggerating here, the nutritional benefits have been massively overstated for this plant, and the risks far outweigh the benefits. Spinach is one of the highest of all foods in oxalate content. For the lowdown on why this is not a good thing, check out my two recent videos. But to get a rough idea, you can see that just 100 grams of spinach was shown to contain more than a gram of total oxalate. Even when cooked, it still contained a whopping 360 milligrams. Considering a low oxalate diet is just 50 milligrams per day, this is huge. If you decide to juice this stuff, it gets much worse. So this study measured the oxalate content of two different green juice recipes. One used 300 grams of spinach, whilst the other used 600 grams. They found that just 200 ml of this high spinach juice contained more than a gram of oxalate. Around three quarters of that was soluble, meaning that it can be absorbed by the human body. Now, not all of this is going to be absorbed, of course, but let's just consider that the lethal dose of oxalate can be as low as just five grams. And just so that you know, there are people who've died from eating too much oxalate, like from sorrel or starfruit. Is it any wonder then that there are numerous case studies showing acute kidney failure in people who do these juices? The common finding among all of these case reports was that all of them contained high quantities of spinach. There's the myth that spinach is a high source of calcium. But measuring calcium content in a lab is not equivalent to how much is actually absorbed by the body. Most of the calcium in spinach is bound up with oxalate, meaning that it won't get absorbed. The bioavailability is thought to be 5% at best. A presentation by oxalate researcher Susan Owens documented research showing zero absorption of calcium coming from spinach. And because of such high oxalate levels, it reduced the calcium absorption from other foods as well. Furthermore, a high percentage of the poor animals fed the high spinach diet died within 90 days of the experiment, demonstrating how toxic this stuff really is. The next myth is that spinach is a high dietary source of iron. Aside from the fact that oxalate also binds iron and reduces its bioavailability, the iron found in spinach is in the non-heme form. The estimated absorption of this form is only around 2%. Whereas in comparison, the absorption from red meat can sit anywhere between 15 and 30%. With this in mind, you should not rely on spinach as a source of iron in your diet. Once again, another myth is that spinach is a rich source of vitamin A. However, this is not true because spinach contains zero vitamin A in the form of preformed retinol. Rather, it contains carotenoids just like many other different colorful vegetables, which need to be converted into vitamin A by the body before they can even be used. But there are many people who can't undertake this conversion very well, and even in the best of cases, the conversion rate is thought to be between 15 and 30 to 1, meaning that these compounds are not a useful source of genuine vitamin A. Instead, preformed retinol is found in meat, fish, eggs, and dairy products. And finally, spinach can yield opiate-like chemicals which have addictive qualities. You've probably heard of the fact that dairy, wheat, and other grains can increase morphine-like compounds in the human body, which are thought to account for why they're so addictive. But I'm guessing you were not aware that spinach can also yield another chemical which is very similar. This is called rubiscolin, and these types of compounds bind with opiate receptors in a similar way to morphine and demonstrate pain-relieving, anti-anxiety effects they can also be addictive. So it makes you wonder, might this be one of the reasons why so many people seem to be addicted to green smoothies? It's essential to understand that the nutritional content of spinach is not unique in any way. There's nothing in there that you can't find in other foods. Look at beef liver, for instance, which outperforms spinach in almost every nutrient by a long shot. And the thing is, there's much safer vegetables to eat if you're looking for green leafy vegetable. Kale is significantly lower in oxalate, arugula is very low, along with bok choy. The risk is just not worth it. The moral of this story is that you need to be wise about what you're putting in your mouth at all times. And some of the so-called health foods are really not healthy in the long run. They could potentially be really dangerous. 